Hi, welcome back to our Road to Steam series, a series in which we'll be creating a game from scratch. Previously on our Hoost Dev Diaries, we created a system that dynamically cleans our blood. In today's episode, we're implementing our blood effects inside our combat. Interested to follow the progress of our game? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all the latest development updates every week. The culmination of our blood journey is nigh. From the implementation of our blood effect, to the creation of new art assets, to finally optimize the overall feature with a cleaning system, the road to this point was quite a long one. But now's the time to bring everything together inside our combat, and create a dance of blood and steel worthy of legends. So get ready, as today's video will be our bloodiest yet. When sitting still, blood does not seem that different from other fluids. What gives it a distinct personality is how it moves and interacts with the surrounding environment. By altering its movement in different ways, you can create various styles of blood effects that each bring a unique feeling to combat. From insane blood sprays that break the rules of physics, to heavy and viscous blood squirts that make you cringe, a stylish direction is the key to bring personality to your dance of violence. However, the important thing with this is to remain true to a style once it is chosen, so that a consistent visual presentation can be maintained. For Hoos, we took inspirations from three different sources, and combined their various aspects into one unique style. Our first inspiration comes from Sekiro. Sekiro is a game of quick and decisive strikes where a single mistake means the end of your life. To emphasize this theme, blood effects were made to be as dramatic as possible in the form of bigger-than-life blood sprays. In Hoos, we want to use this exaggerated take on blood to really push the brutality of our combat. However, to bring some order to this chaos, we'll temper these wild blood sprays with an artistic touch. That's where Berserk comes in. Berserk is a manga that's built on blood and gore. What differentiates it from its competitors is the way the action is portrayed. A great attention to detail is placed on the framing of movements. In its fight scenes, blood gracefully reacts to the swings of Gut's sword, creating drawings that feel almost dance-like. This graceful rendition of blood is something we'll also implement inside Hoos, so that it can elevate the already fluid motions of our combat. As a final touch, we'll take example on Ghost of Tsushima. A game based on the samurai fantasy, Ghost of Tsushima offers a combat experience that is one of a kind. The thing we particularly appreciate from its presentation is how gritty the fights feel. In these confrontations, the violence is never a clean affair. Each sword swing releases litters of blood, painting the battlefield in red and creating a messy aftermath of your passage. In Hoos, we'll create a similar gritty feeling by taking full advantage of the blood splattering system we implemented in our previous episodes. With these inspirations now clearly defined, let's dive in and implement our blood effects inside our combat. To bring our vision to life, we'll create two types of blood effects. A burst splash that goes in a specific direction and a blood fountain that gradually fades out over time. The burst splash is an effect that's emitted from a flat circle. By changing the shape of the circle, we can control the direction and spread of particles. The main purpose of this effect is to instantiate blood that takes on the inertia of a hit. This means that if an enemy gets hit from the right, blood will fly in the left direction. That way, we can realistically sell the impact of our combat interactions. However, compared to the burst splash, blood fountains are effects that do not react to hits, but actively follow body parts. The main purpose of these effects is to simulate a wound that spills out blood. Instead of being instantiated as a one-time burst, they are attached to a specific rigid body, and spray their particles for a small amount of time. 
To mimic the behavior of blood jets, we use a cone-like shape to control their spread and directions. In addition to this, we also decrease their emission rate over the duration of the effect to give the feeling that the targeted region is being drained of its blood supply. Both categories are used in tandem to create an overall choreography of blood. However, their intensity will greatly vary depending on which type of hit they're associated with. To exemplify this, we'll start our implementation by tackling normal sword hits and arrow kills. In combat, normal sword hits are strikes that do not kill the enemies. For these basic strikes, only a small amount of blood is used for their blood effects because of their low impact. To align these blood effects, we freeze frame the enemy's hurt animations in the editor, and place the different particle systems at their appropriate position. We then code him to activate when their specific location is struck during gameplay. For our arrow kills, the process is basically the same, but with some little adjustments. Because these actions are more dramatic than our previous basic hits, we instantiate more particles when their blood effects are activated to convey their higher intensity. But to truly appreciate their differences, they must be seen when they're unleashed on the battlefield. What's left to implement are the blood effects linked to sword kills and dismemberments. However, we won't go over the ones related to sword kills as they share the exact same implementation as the blood effects for our arrow kills. Because of that, we'll focus all of our attention on dismemberments, as their implementation is slightly different from the other ones. The way they differentiate themselves is by their multiple body parts, and their higher impact intensity. Our goal with dismemberments is to make them the most brutal interactions of the game, to accomplish this, we assign a blood fountain on each severed body part, add a burst splash at the location of the cut, and drastically increase the amount of particles these effects emit. As a final touch, we darken the color of our blood over its lifetime. We do this to parallel the darkening effect we use on ragdolls when enemies get killed on the battlefield. This allows the blood to better fade out in the environment, which in the end, gives us a clearer gameplay space. With that out of the way, it's officially time for a Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll add a new dust effect inside the game. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next week for the new episode of our Road to Steam series.